Welcome to the Mind of Business Success Podcast. I'm your host, Alicia Kramer. I have Chris Younger with us. We're going to talk about the future, your future, the future for your business and for your family. I want to welcome you to the show, Chris. Thanks so much, Alicia. I appreciate you having me on. Let's talk about our entrepreneurs, those listening who they don't maybe want to do the same old, same old, you know, they don't want to be employed by their business forever. They've got bigger goals, bigger dreams, bigger visions for their future. That's something that you specialize in. So let's kick things off by talking a little bit about your business so that our listeners have a frame of reference for who you are and what you do. Fantastic. Yeah, we have... uh... (laughs) It's 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 a little bit of an interesting business. Um, it's all focused on the entrepreneur, and typically we're working with entrepreneurs that are either in a transition from their business or are planning for it. Um, I, I'll walk you through it a little bit. We have at the core of our business is an investment bank, and so that's a, a regulated business that manages transactions on behalf of our clients. So when they are looking to sell their company or recapitalize it or find an investor. They might be looking to buy another business. That investment bank, we have about 25 people and that's all they do is manage transactions. Um, And so they got really well-defined processes for how to, to put those together in such a way that we optimize their chances of success. In addition, we have a group, we call it Pathfinder but it's a consulting organization that works with businesses that might be a year to five years away from when they're going to going to go to market to have a transaction. And that business, we have about 20 people in that business and their whole objective is to get businesses ready. So using all the knowledge that we've gained from doing hundreds of transactions, we use that to, to inform the advice that we're giving business owners for how to optimize their business before they go to market. And then on the back end, we have a, a fam- multifamily office. And so we work with about 95 families. Uh, we manage a little over a billion dollars for those families. Um, and almost all those families have come through our investment bank. So they, they either have executed a transaction or they are in the middle of executing a transaction And so we help them navigate that personally. Um, And then the final piece of our business, we have a growth fund. We call it Accelerator. And that's funded in part by our family office members, as well as uh, the principals at Class 6. And that provides capital to a very limited number of our Pathfinder clients that would benefit from having growth capital to help them get to that next level. So like I said, kind of a strange business, but it all focuses on the entrepreneur and, and helping them navigate you know, what is usually a pretty tricky uh, transition. So knowing that we have some people listening who may have never even considered, what is the future of my business? Is that something that I would like to exit someday? Or, you know, is there growth opportunities that I haven't even considered? But now... And, and I, I will say for them, maybe we're getting some some gears turning here. But for those who maybe the seeds already been planted and they know that there are possibilities, but they have no idea, like, where do I begin? Now, that's where your consulting uh, division comes into play. I want to talk a little bit about that, because when we have a big vision goal, whatever that is, and it's new and it's unknown and we're not educated in that area. Human nature is to just put it off, avoid it, um, make excuses for, you know, why now's not the right time. But then we oftentimes will find ourselves at a later point in time thinking, oh shit, I really wish that I would have been preparing for this for the, you know, past couple of years. Let's speak to that. Let's empower our entrepreneurs who are listening. Yeah, I think there's there are a bunch of different reasons why I think business owners put this off. Uh, One is they're very busy. Um, So there's, you know, there are lots and lots of things competing for their attention as a business owner. And 
something that might be two or three or four years off in the future. Uh, it doesn't have that level of urgency. It it definitely has a level of importance, but it doesn't necessarily have that level of urgency. So it's easy to put it off. The second reason I think business owners put this off is it is for a lot of business owners, psychologically difficult to contemplate a future without being an owner of a business. Um, I mean, I, for me personally, it's challenging. And so when something is, again, psychologically challenging to even contemplate, it's easy to put it off, right? Um, and and the third reason is exactly what you said, which is this for almost all business owners will be the first time that they go through something like this. And, uh, you know, unless you're a lifelong learner and you want to dig into that, um, it, you know, it can feel overwhelming. There's just so many things to think about and so many things to comprehend that, you know, that overwhelm, can also make it easy to hey, let's just push this off to the side. And but I can tell you the business owners that overcome those hurdles, they're going to be so much better off because you have this time and runway to really develop and execute what's perfect for them as a business owner versus you know a business owner who deals with it, you know, when it shows up. Hey, somebody just showed up and made an offer for my business. You know, the odds of that being successful or probably less than 20%. Um, but that's that's the path that a lot of business owners take, unfortunately. Like I said, it kills us when we watch it because we watch business owners leave so much money on the table. There are a lot of bigger names out there that in the past couple of years I've seen really been pushing the whole, you know, buying up businesses. Uh, and that's become like a trend. I mean, obviously it's always existed, but when you start to see influencers marketing it all over social media and stuff, it's starting to plant seeds in people's minds. Now, some people are looking at it from that perspective of, okay, well, let me buy up some businesses, right? And so they probably are not fully doing their due diligence either. Whereas, you know, the individuals on the receiving end of those offers are probably incredibly underprepared. And I'd imagine that that could cause a lot of different challenges. Um, one being, you know, you could easily be undervaluing what oh, you sure. actually are sitting on. Let's talk a little bit about some of those preparations that are essential, even if we're not necessarily um, laying out the the precise framework. I would like to start to school everybody on this a little bit, start to make it a little bit more familiar so that it is not so scary and they do feel like they're a little bit more prepared. Sure. One of the things that we, we're big advocates of is just educate yourself on two major topics. One is how are businesses valued? so that you start to develop an appreciation for what will a business, what will a buyer like or not like about your business? Um, because that will determine its ultimate value in the market. And obviously valuation for a business owner is critical to them achieving their objectives. The second piece is educating yourself on the transaction process. Now, again, for most of our clients, our average deal size is 70 or $80 million. So it's probably on the, on the higher side uh, for your listeners. But the buyers for those businesses are either private equity firms or very sophisticated strategic buyers. So I always tell clients, if you're going to go sell your business and you're selling to one of them, you know, that's like playing match play, you know, against Phil Mickelson. Um, where they do it for a living and they're very, very good at it. And, you know, their, their objective is to buy low and sell high. And so you as a business owner will do yourself a big favor by getting educated just on the transaction process. What makes for a successful process? What makes for not a successful process? Um, those two pieces, valuation and understanding the process, will at least put you ahead of 80% of business owners that are out there. Then there's a whole set of work, right? Once you know, here's what is going to drive value in your business. Then there's a whole set of work. That's what our Pathfinder team does. Hey, what's the plan that we need to execute 
so that we can optimize the value in my business? What are the things that I should be taking care of? You know, all the way from uh, how's my team set up to how dependent is the business on me as an individual for the business, you know, in terms of the owner to how do I think about customer concentration or lead concentration? Uh, how do I think about supply chain? There's a whole variety of factors that a business owner needs to start thinking about once you get past understanding what's going to make the business more valuable. There, there's probably so much more depth that we could go into, even high level depth, if that makes any sense. It's almost like an oxymoron, but <laughs> I, I know we're just scratching the surface here, but I do think that that is very valuable for people to start to consider. You know, if this is something that I am uh, you know, planning on doing at some point in the future, it's better for me to get my ducks in, <clears throat> excuse me, my ducks in a row now than scrambling and being, you know, at a, at a major disadvantage in the future, because there are things that I should have been implementing prior to this point here and now. For sure. The, like I said, when we look at clients that have spent the time doing that preparation. So that preparation is all the way from getting your books and records in order so that you can survive a due diligence process that is excruciatingly detailed and painful to, hey, what are the things that I can do to make my business better and more valuable such that, hey, I, I do optimize the sale price when I go to market. Um, there's a lot that goes into that. All Like I said, the from understanding how your team is going to be perceived by a buyer to your role in the business. Um, the other piece that is, I think is critical as, as you think about preparing to go to market um, in addition to getting your ducks in a row and getting organized is understanding, Hey, this is like any sale process, right? When you're out selling to a big customer, you want to know and be able to anticipate what are the objections that I'm going to hear from these buyers. And just like any good sales pitch, you got to anticipate and then answer and resolve those particular sales objections. Um, you could do this by, you know, hey, maybe you're in a peer CEO group. Um, maybe you have an advisor that is knowledgeable about this and can kind of help stress test your business as it would go to market. Um, it, it is, a, like I said, it's for most of our clients, it's their first time through it. So a big piece of our job is just educating them and helping them understand, hey, here's what's coming and, and prepare for it. Those are probably not the types of, of uh, curveballs most people want to be blindsided by. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the stakes are very high, right? Yeah. This is for most of our clients, it's their life's work. The stakes are very high. It's a pressure cooker. There's lots of emotion involved. And if if you're doing this without sophistication um, and without understanding, you know, the results are predictably and they're predictably poor. Well, that was very scary, but hopefully <laughs> that motivates people to see if I am prepared, just like anything. Right. It can be less intimidating. It can be less messy. And on the other side of it is that big ass chunk of money sitting in, you know, in one of your portfolios, right? right. Where that's creating, you know, wealth now for the rest of your life and for your children and your grandchildren and all of that good stuff. Yeah. I again back to for a business owner, they do need to envision, hey, what is life like after this deal? And get comfortable with that um, and be very thoughtful about it. I watch a lot of entrepreneurs who haven't been thoughtful about it. I mean, look, we're all going to transition out of our business, whether it's vertically or horizontally, we're going to transition out of our business. It's much better to be in control of that process and do it in a structured way but you do need to think about what happens post-closing. Um, if you're, most of us as entrepreneurs are type A, we're driven, we're, we, we wake up with purpose, we wake up with goals and objectives. Um, if you wake up without those, 
it can be very disconcerting. And, you know, I've, like I said, I've watched cl uh, clients just get depressed mm -hmm. um, because they haven't been that thoughtful. And so it is a, you, you don't need to prepare the business. You have to prepare yourself personally for that. Well, I, I think this is the perfect segue. Um, so I've seen this and I've had a lot of, lot of conversations with colleagues and, and, people who have, they've, you know, they've, they've had the big sale. They thought, oh, it's going to be great. And I'm just going to play golf all day. And that does not work for the typical entrepreneur. We're wired different. Yep. You have to, and, and there is something to be said about our self-image, especially when we've become the embodiment of this driven hyper, you know, perform performer. And it's all about goals and achieving and growth and, and all of that stuff. Well, if that goes away, that's a huge obstacle at the deepest levels of your psyche, because now you're still programmed with that old self-image, but your life no longer matches that self-image. You hear it with athletes who, yep. you know, transition out of, um, you know, maybe they retire as a professional athlete, you, you, you know, even military people who have been in the military for a very, very long time, it becomes a part of us. And there, a lot of people don't realize it's not just a, a, a switch that you can flip. It takes real inner work to start to prepare yourself mentally and emotionally to make that change. So let's talk a little bit about that because you see that. Um, maybe you have some guidance, some tips, something that you can share with people so we can plant that seed as well. Yeah, in, in my uh, prior life, I did a consolidation. So I uh, was responsible for buying a bunch of companies and then we built it up, we sold it. Um, I, I was too young, but I tried to retire for about a year. Um, and one of the things that I learned, at least for me personally, and I think this is true for a lot of our clients is you have to have purpose. You have to have purpose in the morning. And at least for me personally, and I think this is true for a lot of people, that purpose can't be yourself. That purpose has to be something bigger than yourself, other people, some bigger cause, something that's meaningful that, um, again, it, it, and it can't just be self-centered. That's why I think a lot of entrepreneurs, if they you know, sell their company and then they're playing golf all the time, um, there's no purpose. And again, uh, having... Uh, uh, played a lot of golf, you know, trying to just reduce your handicap one or two strokes is not going to provide you life purpose, right? It's not going to give you that meaning that allows you to, to be motivated. And so I think for entrepreneurs, it's really defining, all right, well, today my purpose is my business and providing for my family. Tomorrow I'll have achieved the financial piece of providing for my family. What's next? And it could be, hey, it's all about your grandkids or it's all about in, in under, you know, un, unfortunately, some people are dealing with health issues. Hey, my purpose is to get healthy. Um, some of it, maybe I want to go start another business or I want to be an investor now in other businesses or I want to be a mentor to other entrepreneurs or we have a lot of clients that do a lot charitably. Um, it's a uh, to your point, it is something that you got to spend some time thinking about, because if you enter into this without being thoughtful about it, it'll, it'll be a, it'll be a big shock. And a lot of us as entrepreneurs just don't deal with that very well. We've taken our listeners through a journey. <laughs> we, we started at that, that earliest, you know, planting the seed that, Hey, maybe just maybe, you know, in, Maybe it's not, not not for 10 or 20 years, but at some point, you know, there's going to be something that I've created here that someone else can take and continue growing and I can move on to the next stage on my journey. Uh, and of course, we've 
you know, we've instilled a little bit of fear in people, you know, don't, don't just wing it, <laughs> right? Get expert help. Uh, it will probably be a very valuable return on your investment to get proper guidance and support through the process and starting to actually think about what that next step is going to be for you. What is going to have you waking up in the morning with that sense of purpose and still feeling that zest for life. So this is where I would like to ask you, Chris, how can our listeners learn more about you and what you guys are doing? Uh, best place is just our website, um, which is class6partners.com class vi partners the roman numeral class vi partners.com uh and there you can get a hold of us there's a ton of information educational information that we put up to help entrepreneurs think about various topics uh and so that's that's the best way to do it uh, we we wrote a book uh, myself and my business partner wrote a book called harvest um, that they can find on Amazon as well. That is just a, it's an education about business valuation and the deal process. Uh, and again, we're, we're just big advocates of education and, and for an entrepreneur who's invested so much time and energy in building their business, not to leave a whole bunch of it on the table because they didn't think and plan ahead, uh, you know, for this last leg of their journey. Well, I want to thank you for helping to educate all of us and plant some seeds. And of course, um, I mean, this this has been one of those conversations that's unique uh, on this particular podcast. You know, we're talking with a lot of different experts on a lot of different subjects pertaining to business. This is not one that we get into very frequently, and it's a very valuable one. So I really do appreciate your time today, Chris. Well, thank you, Alicia. And thank you for doing what you do for entrepreneurs. It is absolutely my reason for getting up in the morning. Uh, and to, to end on that note, I've got to thank all of our listeners. You know, we're doing this for you. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do so. And until next time, we will see you in the next episode.